Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is inertia and circular motion. And we want to know, how can you explain the feeling of there being an outward force on your body when you round the corner in a car or on an amusement park ride? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A commonly held belief among beginning students of physics is that an object that is moving in a circle is experiencing a centrifugal force. Here, the word centrifugal means outwards or away from the circle center. This belief is in part supported by experience, for which one of us has not felt the sensation of being pushed outwards when rounding a turn at high speed in a car or on an amusement park ride? For instance, consider the sensations that you would have when you round the various curves on this roller coaster ride. Along the horizontal turns, you would feel your body being pushed towards the outside of the car, away from the center of the circle. Then there's these rounded hills. When you reach the crest of each hill, you would feel the sensation of being pushed upwards. In fact, if your car was equipped with a lap bar, your thighs would feel like they were being pushed firmly into that lap bar. Here at the crest of the hills, upwards is away from the circle center, the circle center being below the crest of the hill. And then finally, along these rounded dips, you would feel like your body was being pushed downwards into the seat of your car. Downwards at these locations is away from the circle center. That location is above you when you're at these dips. A whiteboard, a tennis ball, and a block of wood is all that is needed to simulate the motion of a passenger in a car making a left-hand turn at high speed. Here, the whiteboard happens to be the car, the passenger is represented by the tennis ball, and the block of wood is the door on the passenger side. On the left, you'll notice that the passenger and the door are in contact with one another, and as such, there's a force on the passenger directed normal to the block and towards the center of the circle. This illustrates that an inward force is needed in order for a passenger to make a circular turn. On the right, you'll notice there's no door, and without a door, there's no force on the passenger. The car begins to turn, and the passenger goes straight forward in a straight line. A force is not required for this. This is just the natural tendency of an object in motion to continue in motion with the same speed and direction in the absence of any unbalanced force. Let's analyze this situation in more detail, beginning with the case of there's no door on the car. When there's no door on the car, the car turns out from under the passenger, and the passenger continues in a straight line path. No force is needed for this. In fact, according to Newton's first law, a straight line path results when the net force is zero, and an object in motion like this passenger continues in motion, same speed, same direction, away from the center circle. Now when you have a door, instead of the passenger following the straight line inertial path and being at locations 1 prime, 2 prime, and 3 prime, the force of the door on the passenger is inwards towards the circle center and the passenger ends up along the circular path at locations 1, 2, and 3. It's the force of this door on the passenger that supplies the centripetal force requirement in order to sustain the circular motion. While the passenger is pressed against the door, the door presses inward on the passenger, and thus we have circular motion. Now let's consider a right-hand turn. A car passenger on a right-hand turn feels pushed outwards towards the outside of the car. But is she or he? Is there really an outward force pushing the passenger away from the circle center? To understand this in more detail, let's suppose we could view it from above, a bird's eye view of the motion of the passenger, the driver, and the car. Here what you notice is that the passenger is actually traveling straight ahead. It's the car that's doing the turning. The straight line motion of the passenger doesn't require a force, but when the passenger hits the driver, now there's a force on the passenger that pushes it inward to sustain the circular motion. But in the head of the passenger, being inside the reference frame of the car, he or she will believe that they're being pushed outwards towards the driver. But as we see here, 
it's the driver being pushed inwards. Once contact is made between the passenger and the driver, the passenger pushes the driver outwards, but the driver pushes the passenger inward. It's the inward push that causes the passenger to deviate from the from the otherwise straight line path. As for the driver, there's an outward push on the driver from the passenger, but there's a stronger force from the door of the car, pushing the driver inwards, allowing the driver to make this circular turn as well. A common physics demonstration is the whirling of a bucket of water in a circle. If you've not seen it, check out the link in the description section. It's worth a peek. Now what many people are surprised by in this demonstration is that when the bucket is upside down at the top of the circle, the water doesn't spill out. Why not? Well, one answer to the question of why not is why would anyone expect the water to spill out? After all, the water's been moving upwards along its path. When it gets to the top of the circle, it would still want to continue moving upward. Why would anyone expect it to fall downward? After all, if you threw a ball upwards, it wouldn't all of a sudden turn around and fall downwards when it reached a given point. Now, a more reasonable expectation for the water is when it gets to the top of the circle, it might follow a parabolic path due to the influence of gravity. In other words, it might become a projectile and follow the path that's shown. But it doesn't. And it doesn't because there's an additional force besides gravity upon the water. It's the force of the bucket bottom and walls pushing on the water inwards in order for the bucket of water to sustain a circular motion. An inward force is all that you need to keep an object moving in a circle. Now it will sound kind of crazy, but for a moment let's entertain the idea that we replace the water in the bucket with small shrunken people. What would the people feel and why? Well, the people would be in the bottom of the bucket and when they reach the top of the circle, they would maybe feel like they were being pushed outwards. But that's not what's going on. There's no outward push. In fact, there's an inward push upon the people. That tendency or feeling to be pushed outwards is simply explained by the fact that there's inertia that objects moving upwards would want to continue to move upwards along that trajectory. But it's the force inwards that sustains their circular motion. Newton's third law states that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The fact is, forces always come in pairs resulting from the interactions between a pair of objects. If you've ever been on a rotor ride or barrel ride at an amusement park or carnival, you undoubtedly have felt pressed outwards against the wall of the barrel. The way the ride works is that riders enter the barrel, they stand next to the wall, the wall begins to spin at high speeds, and then they drop the floor out from underneath the riders. Instead of falling down, there's a large normal force of the wall pushing on the backs of the riders, and thus a large friction force that prevents the falling motion. Now, in this situation, the riders would always tend to follow the path of the blue vector. That's the velocity vector drawn tangent to the circle. With no force, an object in motion would continue along the direction of that velocity vector, but a force would cause a change in velocity, mainly the direction of the velocity, pushing the riders inward so that they can follow the circular path. Now there is an outward force here, and that outward force is the force of the riders pushing on the wall of the barrel. But for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if riders push the barrel wall outwards, the barrel wall pushes the riders inwards in order to sustain the circular motion. There are likely two types of people who use the phrase centrifugal. The first type is the type that doesn't know what they're talking about and probably shouldn't be using the phrase at all. But the second type of person is a person who certainly does know what they're talking about but needs to exercise great caution so that they don't convey the wrong message to first-time physics students. Of the two types of people, it's the first type I'm most concerned about because they truly believe that the net force is outwards on an object moving in a circle. The second 
Hittite knows for certain that the net force on an object moving in a circle is directed inwards, but in more advanced studies of physics, it becomes quite useful to analyze a motion from the reference frame of a rotating object. And in such instances, the idea of a centrifugal or outward force becomes an important part of the analysis. And those who know what they're talking about will be quick to admit that such a force is a non-existent fictitious force, not a real force, merely a useful trick in analyzing emotion. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have two excellent Minds on Physics missions that get at the heart of this lesson, and you have a tutorial page which makes for a great brushing up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.